Next, let's look at retweeting using Tweepy. As a refresher, we just call the retweet method passing in a tweet ID. For our case, let's copy one of the tweet IDs from our previous for loop and save it to a tweet ID variable. Then we can pass in our variable to the retweet method. So if we go over to VS Code, let's copy this and again create a new file called retweet.py just for testing purposes. And we can comment out our for loop. And what we want to do is now retweet a tweet ID. So what we need is an actual tweet ID, which we can get from our terminal if we pull one of these. So again, these are one of David Dobrik's last five likes. So now if we just say the tweet ID, which is an integer, we could call our API retweet method, which actually is just taking in that tweet ID variable. Okay, so if we save this and run it, we should see in our timeline that we retweeted this tweet ID. So let's save it. Head to our terminal and run python retweet.py. Again, no errors. So let's go check our Twitter handle. And if we go to our profile, we see that we retweeted Doug the Pug, the story of my bromance with David Dobrik, which is, if I had to guess, yep, David Dobrik's recent liked tweet, which was one hour ago. Great, let's head back to VS Code. What we want to do now is turn this into a for loop by taking the tweet ID from the tweet list. So here, we say retweet each tweet, and we said for tweet in tweet list. We want to run that same method, retweet, and again, we're gonna access the tweet ID, much like we did here for printing it. We can now loop over the five tweets in the tweet list and retweet each, passing in that specific tweet ID, which we're getting for each. And then what we're gonna do is just add in error handling in case anything goes wrong. So for here, we'll add a try, indent in, and then an accept. Except, and that's if Tweepy gives us a tweep error as E, then we just want to know what the error is. Otherwise, it will retweet it. So if we save this, and let's comment out what we did above. If we save this now, we should loop over that five tweets in the tweet list and retweet each of them. Now, since we already retweeted one, it should be four new tweets. So let's save this, head over to our terminal, and run it again, fingers crossed. Great, so it looks like we were successful and what we got was one error code message which said, you have already retweeted this tweet. So it looks like it just printed the error message, but if we go to our timeline, we see, hey, great, now we have all of David Dobrik's other likes. Oh, that's, if we go to our profile now, we see that we have David Dobrik's other likes. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Now, one last step is to replace the static tweet list with actually all of David Dobrik's likes. So we can do this for, by replacing the tweet list with the original API object we called. So again, we want to get rid of this tweet list, which again was really just coming from this API favorites call. So what we can do is take this same call and replace the tweet list, and then we're going to remove the count restrictions. So now if we were to run this, 
we actually would retweet all of David Dobrik's likes. Now, I'm not gonna run it just because he has a lot of likes, and instead we can save this and run it going forward. In the next section, we'll convert these to functions so we can call them in one script. But again, what we did here was what we made it dynamic, so now we're basically saying, hey, check all of David Dobrik's likes. For each of those, we're gonna retweet them, and retweet it unless we run into an error such as the one we saw before, which says we've already retweeted it. Looks like we have our bot really taking shape.